it's me again. It's Rach, the keto vegan. I will admit I'm not 100% keto sometimes. Sometimes I slip up and I do have a carb and then it gets me out of ketosis. And then it takes three days, four days of being really good. And then my wee turns to strip red again, which is lovely. Isn't that a lovely thought? So how do we really get hold of this? Now, I said at the end of the last episode, I'm going to talk about getting out of your head and into the body. And I just saw a short clip, a reel of the Diary of a CEO podcast. And he was talking to this lady. I'm afraid I don't know who she was. And she said, because he asked the question, how do you know what decisions to make? And she said, when she has a decision to make, she asks a question, she closes her eyes. I think this is what she said, but it's definitely about going into your body. Ask the questions and then just feels, how does the body feel? Don't listen to the thoughts in your head. Is the body feeling constricted or expansive? If it felt expansive, then that was a yes for her. Now, <laughs> So I listened to this little reel and I had a very close friend that I care about very much. They were going through this kind of dilemma and was all full of these thoughts and everything. And I gave them this advice. And basically they got back to me the very next day and saying, sorry, Rach, I asked that question. I was at an exercise class and I asked a question and all I could think about was the thing that I wanted the answer about. Um, and it was a yes, 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 even though the right answer is actually no. And I chuckled now <laughs> because this answer was still coming from their head. All those thoughts, all those memories, all of that stuff was up here. And this person used to be a religious person and I was just thinking about it and just curious about it that somebody who used to be spiritual now is very much in the head and not sort of connected with source energy and I then thought well, how did I start getting out of my head into being much more aware of all that is of whatever you want to call it I many religious people will call that God Many other non-religious but spiritual people call that source or universe. I am tending to call it creator. I don't like the masculinity of God. I've got a bit of a problem with that, having been brought up in the church. Don't get me started on that. I won't go off on a tangent on that one. Keep focused, Rach. Keep focused. You can do this. Okay, so I call that loving entity that created us and that we are part of I call that creator now how did I get out of my head into being more aware of what is right for me what is good for me what source energy what creator wants for me how I'm being guided and led and it all started when I as I said I had been religious I had been a Christian I'd been very um quite I would been part of a leadership team of a church but I then started teaching religious <laughs> studies which made me question everything that I had been brought up to believe and don't question anything Rachel have faith that is how it is now for me when I started learning about other religions all these questions came up and I'm not going to say why um, I changed or I turned away from Christianity, but I came a real hard atheist. I was in a place, this is when I was in my late 30s, I was in my inner place where I said there is no God and I didn't believe in anything spiritual. But then all these coincidences started happening and I somebody would pop into my mind and I'd send them a text like, hey, how are you? I'm thinking of you. And it was at absolute moments of crisis, key moments, and me just reaching out basically saved their lives. And this happened a number of times. I'm like, oh, that's spooky. And so my spiritual journey started. 
and at the right moments these books came into my life and I read them and they just took me to a place where I've never felt so accepted and loved, not judged, never judged. And I love that phrase, um, there is always well-being. You either let it in or you shut it off. There is nothing else. And I do think that people who are doing these things that we would call perhaps evil are doing the best they can with what they have, with their level of spirituality. And so that's difficult, isn't it, to understand. But when you realise that your experience of life is only your thinking, we don't experience life, we experience our thinking about life. So you're not experiencing this podcast. This podcast is not the truth. This podcast is only, you're only experiencing it because of your thinking, so if you really don't like how my hair is today and it is a flipping mess, isn't it? <laughs> or what I'm wearing or whatever, you're going to get a little bit like pissy about it or cross about it or irritated. But if you're thinking, yeah, I'm loving that, then your whole your experience of that is going to be very different to somebody else's experience of it. The podcast is the same, but our experiences are determined by us. And only us. So how do we get out of our head? I get in my head so much. I I want to be much more centred, much more present, much less thinking about the past and worrying about the future. I want to be centred and now and present. And sometimes, yeah, hey, sometimes I am. But so often I'm not. And I try and then I, I do meditate in the mornings and sometimes I do a card reading in the morning. I I go still, I pray, I pray to all that is, to creator. I ask for guidance from my guides um, and my angels and ancestors and guardians and all of that. And so they, they never give up on me. They never say, Rach, you've failed so much. You ate those carbs and now you feel so bad about yourself. And yes, you deserve to punish yourself. I've never, ever had anything but acceptance and love and guidance. Isn't that incredible? And yet I still get out of my body and into my thinking. Ah, I... Yeah, I mean, and I listen. I listen to um, a lot of reels from Bashar, B-A-S-H-A-R, who's very direct, from Abraham Hicks. I get a daily quote from Abraham Hicks each day, which is lovely. And I go centred and I go and up to creator. Not a lot. Maybe I should do that more. So I want you now, let's practice. <laughs> do not do this if you are driving. And I'd imagine if you're listening to this, you might well be driving. When else do you listen to a podcast? So, but you can do this. I'm not going to send you get your eyes closed, go into meditation or visualization. Let's do a little bit of practice. Okay, have a thought just think now about your breathing. Breathe in really slowly. Feel that breath going in. Hold it for two, three seconds if you're okay with holding it. I've got some clients hip now and one of them said, I can't do my holding breath thing. I'm like, that's absolutely fine. It's really fine. You don't have to hold your breath. But just breathe in. Feel that cool air going in. Hold it. When you breathe out, feel that warm air going out. Do that three times nice and slowly that's all we need to do to get centered and present maybe I should set a reminder on my phone to do that more often so I become more present I do have a random reminder um, app which is really good and I set some positive words and intentions on that so that does remind me randomly three times a day not at the same time which I find really helpful okay back to the point Rach so <laughs> 
breathe in and out three times slowly. And so when you have a question, go to your breath. That takes you into your body. Feel the breath going in. Feel it filling your lungs. Visualize a bright, beautiful, pure, positive, loving light breathing in, filling your body. And breathe out anything that doesn't serve you, any worries or anxieties. Hand it over. Give it up to the universe. Give that away and then breathe in more love and light and acceptance. That's how we get out of our head and into our body. So when you've got these questions, you know the answer. You really do know the answer if you get out of your head. It is there. You have everything there that you need. You are perfect. The way you were born is still the person that you are and you were born perfect. Then we get socialized, then we get conditioned and then we start understanding about thinking and believing our thoughts. But we are perfect when we get out of our heads and into our breath and our body. We will find that center, that beautiful core love that is who we are. I read a book, can't remember who it was by, but it's about um, enlightenment and reaching the, I can't even remember what the book was called, but he uses this analogy. If I remember, I will put a link underneath. He uses this analogy of that we are diamonds covered in shit and we try to polish the shit to make the shine come out. We need to get rid of the shit. And that's when we start allowing that well-being and stop stopping it. Stop trying to do the right things all the time. Stop trying to be the right person. But start by finding the centre and start loving who we are. We cannot love anybody else unless we love ourselves. Who is your biggest critic? It's you. So I think I've done this before, hand on heart. If you can, close your eyes. If you are driving, don't, but put your hand on your heart, unless you're turning a corner. No, you're meant to drive legally with two hands on the steering wheel. Don't listen to me, but imagine your hand on your heart and just say to yourself, what is it like to be me when I'm not judging myself? And sit with that and then 10, 20, 30 seconds later, ask that question again. We need to stop judging ourselves. I am so guilty of that far too often when I'm not having an, a present day, when I'm lost in my thinking. But let's do this together. Know that I'm with you as much as I can be. Do contact, comment, whatever, but reach out to those that you know are at the same place or just that little bit more than and then you never know what blessings they might bring. I said didn't I that I get these quotes from Abraham Hicks and I've got a couple written down I sort of save them every now and again and um, I get sent emails every single day I'll put a link um, if you want to subscribe to them as well I find them so encouraging but I would really recommend as well that you read um, the book, The Law of Attraction, Abraham Hicks. Um, it's so, it is just, it changed my life. I think that might be because I read it at the right time for me. And I, I had bought it a year, years before, months before. And I picked it up at exactly the right time for me. And those coincidences, hmm, don't think they are somehow. Anyway, I want to read to you a couple of these quotes that I've copied and saved. So, so this is the first one that I've got. And this very much fits in with what I've been saying. It says, rather than trying to monitor your thoughts, we encourage that you simply pay attention to how you are feeling. For if you should choose a thought that is not in harmony with the way that broader, older, wiser, lover, inner being part of you sees it, you will feel the discord and then you can easily 
redirect your thought to something that feels better and therefore serves you better. And the last one that I'm going to leave you with is this. Love and appreciation are identical vibrations. Appreciation is the vibration of alignment with who you are. Appreciation is the absence of everything that feels bad and the presence of everything that feels good. When you focus upon what you want and when you tell the story of how you want your life to be, you will come closer and closer to the vicinity of appreciation. And when you reach it, it will pull you toward all things that you consider to be good in a very powerful way. Now, if we're, if we're wanting, that means we keep creating this vibration of wanting. But when we are in appreciation, we are creating this vibration of appreciation. And if we start appreciate, appreciating our life as if it is how we want it to be, that, is, that vibration is going to start attracting more of that. So I'm going to leave you with that. I hope you found this episode helpful. I know it hasn't got anything to do with being keto, anything to do with being vegan. But if you are struggling with either of those, using all of this, being present, being mindful, being kind to yourself. It all fits in, I think. I'll see you next time. With love.